sing praise to our God, all you who fear God, both small and great. For now salvation and strength have come, and the power of his Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I welcome you to Mass Tuesday in the third week of Easter. And we're offering this Mass today for the repose of the soul of Frank Horner. It's how the rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most grievous thought. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who open wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water in the Holy Spirit, pour out among your servants an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing that in your kindness you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Lord. 
in the desert. As scripture says, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread always. Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Suffering is perhaps the hardest concept for us to understand in the spiritual life. But honestly, Jesus never missold eternal life. If you want to be a disciple of mine, you must renounce yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me. As the church teaches us, it is clear that those who suffer for Christ enjoy the glory of the whole Trinity. And we can think of countless examples of martyrs who have gone to their deaths knowing that heaven awaits them. Stephen, the first martyr, we are told, saw the Father and Jesus at his side. So this first martyr for Christ is consoled by the presence of Jesus who stands near him and hands him the crown of martyrdom and encourages him to maintain his faithful witness to the truth. I want to be very clear. Whilst there is a noble virtue in laying down to one life for the sake of the gospel, we should not act from bravado. Uh, we should not be seeking out the death and destruction of others in some form of irreligious crusade, pretending that we are doing God's will. It would be complete nonsense to think that God needs our help to sort out those sorts of people who upset him. No, just don't do it. Today's reading also presents a challenge to the homeless because it covers certain things that the homeless would always want to sidestep. You know, things that are legal, but not necessarily moral. It's always a challenge for the church in modern society. Uh, that first reading reminding us of the virtue of justice. We see Stephen is punished and he does not get due process and he is given the death penalty. It's a very difficult topic. When we think about the commandment, thou shalt not kill, it was always taken uh, to mean, thou shalt not take innocent life. It was not immediately obvious that you shouldn't necessarily put a criminal to death or you shouldn't put a combatant to death. It wasn't necessarily the understanding. So we can't say that the death penalty is intrinsically evil and wrong 
in every single circumstance. However, again, just because it's legal doesn't necessarily mean it is a good thing or it's morally going to be considered good. Anyone who doesn't get due process is, of course, not given their dignity. But even if you're imprisoned, again, unlawful detention would be a front to human dignity. So there's always a problem, always a difficulty in balancing the offence and punishment. The punishment will always, to a degree, be an affront to human dignity. However, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one at times. Sometimes it's the other way round, that the needs of the one outweigh the needs of the many, especially in terms of the protection of the innocent. These are things that are uh, best left to moral theologians, which I am not. And even if we have recourse to extreme punishments, we should be asking ourselves, is there a better option? And in our modern times, we would suggest that there is always a better option than the death penalty. You know, because we have the ability of secure prisons. So although technically you could put someone to death, in almost every single circumstance now, it would be inadmissible because there's always a better option. And also, we have shifted a little bit as well in terms of our understanding of punishment. We've moved away from the idea of an eye for an eye so that the just penalty would be you killed someone, therefore you share the same fate. We've moved away from that. So we also move into an idea that punishment is about rehabilitation. That's a massive shift in, 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 in a societal norm. And we are hoping that however slight the possibility is, that a person might be able to retake their place in the community in the future. Um, whether that happens, you know, when you hear, yes, it's very confusing when you hear uh, judges give sentences, life sentence, but it will serve 30 years. That's about whether the time before they would even be considered for parole doesn't mean they'll be released. But there is that slight possibility that somebody may be released. So that's always a tension going on. And of course, as we've seen, it's been in the news cycle for the last few months since Christmas, there's always the possibility of miscarriage of justice where someone has been convicted and they are not actually guilty. And if you've incarcerated them, then at least you have the option that you can let them go and you can give them some compensation for that loss of time. How do you compensate someone who has been put to death? You know, you can't. So, Again, that's where sometimes the needs of the one outweigh the needs of the many. You have to actually accept that we have to be very careful in what we, what we do. Some of this also, though, gets stirred up, this emotional response to it, especially now in the world of the internet and social media. And we see a return to what we have in the first reading. The danger of lynch mobs, very worrying indeed. People who are passing sentence on people who have committed misdemeanors or they've expressed traditional views uh, which now challenge modern sensibilities. Uh, and these keyboard warriors, often hiding behind anonymous avatars, are passing sentence and whipping up uh, the crowd. It's very worrying indeed. Um, I hope we, that's n not us. We do it though, even if we're not on keyboard, we do it through gossip. You know, we do it sometimes by harming a person's reputation. That's a form of, of killing someone, because actually sometimes all we've actually got is our, is our good name. And that gets dragged uh, through the mud 
because someone thinks they've got a little bit of information about someone and they share it with another and they share it with another and it gets all blown out of all uh, proportion. But back to the first point we were making about Christian martyrdom, we're all called to it. We're all called to martyrdom. But we need to remember what that word martyr means. It means witness. So we are called to an heroic witness of the gospel. It doesn't necessarily mean we'll be put to death, you know, but we will have to die in other ways. We die to self, we die to our passions, and we uh, live uh, to something much more noble, living lives of uh, truth and virtue, really living out our baptismal dignity of kingship, leading people into the peace of God's kingdom. Hopefully it'll be another year or so before I have to tackle such topics again. Sisters, the most sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, the praise and the glory of His name. Now and forevermore, Church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks as you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Frank, whom you've called from this world to yourself, from that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. If we have died with Christ, we should believe that we shall also live with Christ. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, so the next Mass in the church here is half past six on Thursday evening, and then on Friday at the Lord be with you. And with the Lord. Spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Regina Chang.